Well, here it comes. Sonoff SV to control your garage doors. If you haven't automated your garage doors yet, here's your chance. One of the first things I automated in my home was the garage doors. It makes a lot of sense to automate the garage doors because there's a lot of cool and useful things you can do with them. Like set a timer to check on them at night and make sure they're closed. I did a video about automating your garage doors already using a D1 Mini and a relay shield. But this is a good way to demonstrate what the Sonoff SV can do. So here's another solution. These are the things you're gonna need to smarten up your garage doors. A Sonoff SV, a reed switch, a USB cord and a wall adapter, some jumper wires, a soap dish, and there is some soldering involved. In this case, there's really no way around the soldering, but it's not too bad. First, let's do the software setup. Since the point here is to connect your garage doors to some sort of home automation hub like Home Assistant, we're gonna replace the stock firmware with Tasmoda. Don't let the idea of flashing firmware scare you. It does take a little bit of learning and you'll probably run into some errors the first time you do it, but once you've got it down, you can start to make a whole lot of use out of these really inexpensive Sonoff devices. I've done a video already on how to do the flashing and I've already decided that I'm gonna do another one, but for now, check out this one. Since there's been some problems with the over-the-air flashing method, I'm gonna recommend that you use the hardwired method for flashing. Once the upload is done, find the IP address for your new Tasmotized Sonoff. Now put the IP address in your browser and it'll open up the home page of your device. Go to configuration, configure module, and then set the module type to Sonoff SV. Hit save and the board will restart. Once it's restarted, go back into configure module and set GPIO 14 to switch to. Save it and it'll restart again. This time when it restarts, click console and then in the box, type switch mode one, zero, and switch mode two, two. That's all there is for the Tasmoda setup, but now we've got some work to do in Home Assistant. Open your configuration.yaml file, make a heading called cover, and copy and paste this text from the video description. Now in your customized section, we're gonna set the device class and give it a friendly name. If you wanna create a card that says garage doors instead of cover, open your groups.yaml file, or if you don't have one, just open an empty file and call it groups.yaml and then copy and paste this into that file and save it. Make sure you've saved your configuration.yaml file, then open up your Home Assistant user interface, check your config, and then restart Home Assistant. Now we're gonna go into the automation editor and create a new automation. The trigger is going to be the MQTT topic that gets fired when the relay on the Sonoff turns on. And the action we want is for the relay to turn back off after one second. Save that, and then go out and reload your automations. Okay, I think we're done with software. Now it's time for the hardware setup. To isolate the power that goes to the ESP chip from what goes through the relays, you need to remove these two resistors. I just took a small screwdriver, put it next to the resistors and twisted, and they popped right off. Now I know this isn't necessary, and there's other ways you can use the Sonoff SV without isolating the power to the ESP chip, but I'm doing this to show it's possible and it works. Okay, now we're gonna start the soldering. Take two lengths of small wire, solder one end of one wire to the positive pad on the input side of the Sonoff, and one end of the other wire to the positive pad on the output side of the Sonoff. These are the wires that are gonna to connect to the contact points on your garage motor that also go to the button. So make sure that the length is appropriate based on where you plan on putting your Sonoff. Now connect the female end of a couple of jumpers to GPIO 14 and ground. These are the wires that are gonna to go to the reed switch, which is gonna tell you if your garage door is open or closed. Now most likely you've got some kind of a broken USB cable around your house. In this case, we're gonna use a USB cable to power the Sonoff. Cut the cable to get to the wires. The red wire is the positive, and the unshielded wire and the metal sheath around the rest of the wires are the ground. And in this case, that's all you need. Connect the red wires to a jumper that you're gonna use on the positive terminal, and connect the ground wires to another jumper to use on the negative terminal. This is the point where we lay everything out and test it before we start installing it in our garage. So connect the reed switch, power up the board, and open up Home Assistant. Move the magnet to test the reed switch, and then click the open and close arrows in Home Assistant to test the relay. If all that works, then you're ready to go install it in your garage. I put mine up next to the garage door motor, but you don't have to do it this way. I mounted the reed switch to this metal track and then the magnet to the top of the garage door. I had to get pretty creative about how to get it to stay because there's a lot of motion, it shakes it around a lot, and if you don't secure it firmly, it'll just fall off. Now find the contact points on your garage door motor that connect to the button. Easy way to do that is just take a piece of wire, start poking contacts until the garage door opens or closes. Connect the wire from the positive on the input side of the Sonoff to one of those contacts, and the other wire that's connected to the positive on the output side of the Sonoff to the other contact. Now connect the positive and negative wires to power the Sonoff, tuck it all into your soap box, put it somewhere secure, and plug it in. If all went well, you're done. Congratulations. Here's an example of a cool automation that'll check to see if your garage doors are open at night and close them if they're not. 
And you can also set it up to get notifications on your iPhone and it'll give you a button to press to close them. Watch the other video to get the details on how to make that work. I've tried to do presence detection to open up the garage doors when I'm pulling into the driveway, but I haven't been able to make it work reliably. If anybody has an idea about how to make presence detection work, I'd love to hear about it. So there it is. From the ashes of the failed battery button project arises the Sonoff SV Garage Door Opener Phoenix. Thanks for watching. Until next time, adios.